So I do have one question for you all before we start this craziness and chaos. So in the event of a zombie apocalypse, where's one of the first places you guys would hunker down? In the event of a zombie apocalypse, where's the first place you would hunker down? There's no judgment in the safe room. Alright, alright, sure, sure, I'll, I'll entertain you. Yeah. Um, probably... It really depends on the zombies. If it's low, then I'll give it all the time. I'll give it all the time. I'll give it all the time. I don't know the bathroom. That's a very good question. Probably at a hospital. I go to a junkyard. Place where I live, my mom's basement. Um, my home. <laughs> That's a bad idea, my guy. You've got that ceiling call like a GTA in style. <laughs> you said you would, uh choose a mall, but would you be worried about competition there and others fellow survivors who might be uh, combative even over territory and supply? Would you try and maybe b do your- Would you try your best to be a- Oh, shit! <laughs> if there was a zombie apocalypse, there wouldn't, there wouldn't really be an, an apocalypse to be like just a natural everyday occurrence that people yeah, die in one of these, like mosquitoes. Do you, do you think that society would be able to handle such a shock as zombies and treat them as mosquitoes and be that civilized? I- I give myself a couple weeks and then I'm just off myself because I don't like life to begin with. I just kill myself. Home with a gun in my mouth. I get it. Basically at home with a gun in my mouth. Oh no. I think we just kind of ignore him. If not at sea, I'd say the mountains. I like that. Do you have uh, any particular area of mountains in mind? I'd say close to the shore. Like maybe, maybe the Appalachian Mountains. I think that would be a good choice. Supermarket. Tim at Sarah's home supermarket. Lots of <laughs> I food like and supplies. Hell and yeah. lives everywhere. That man no, said steal like a car <laughs> GTA style and get the f*** <laughs> out of there. No. Fucking Walter <laughs> Bob lives on the motherfucking edge. <laughs> so you say you'd post up at your house, would you just like exactly. fortify your walls and hope for the best or would you have like a plan to maybe like just kind of hunker down for a week or two and then just see what it looks like afterwards? Yeah, kind of something like that, you know, I think I'd be looking out the window. If you guys get any neighbors or shit out there. Yeah, you got the extended that Netflix, my guy. You got a chill in your house, you know, for the next five. Oh, well, first of all, we try to hold out of my house for as long as possible. Oh, that's um, good. Prevailing Some nice house, bro. Oh, like, kill myself, that was... <laughs> yeah, and, but of course the natural problem with that is eventually the map, so as you reach a, one of the evacuation points, there should, would surely be one an evacuation point of some sort, um, if I could. Try and airlift out to somewhere else a little bit safer? Yeah, but it, yeah, definitely. But if this is like a product zombie type of field where, you know, there is no military anymore, everything's collapsed, then I would do my best to uh, stick it out, but I have very few survival skills. I don't know how long I'm going to make it. I <laughs> oh, would just go straight to Australia. Hey, stop! Why? Why? Really? That's that's different. That's new. I like that. What makes you say Australia? Just curious. I saw geography. You said you'd go for the uh, geography, like for the landscape and whatnot. No, it's just really isolated. All you basically do is, well, Bill's plan of just wiping out the island of zombies. It's not like they can swim or anything. It's better than being landlocked with uh, three major con two major continents. Everyone there has a gun. I mean, America is pretty f***ing, pretty filled with guns. Yeah. My uh, local army supply store, MREs, uniforms, like a gun store. I know a guy that has a lot of guns, so probably his house. Hey Paul, you said you're from South America, hey, right? Yes sir, I am. I have to ask, it's very interesting. Uh, what, what do you think of America? What's your view on America? You mean the country? Yes, yes. That's where I'm from, and I'd love to know what you and other people around you, and your country in general, what do you, how do you guys view America? How do you view America? Well, I'm gonna be, uh, tremendously honest with you. Absolutely. Uh, we, we, we view America and Americans as king ignorance, and crazy, not people, with guns, a lot of guns. <laughs> I really much appreciate your honesty, so I like to interview different people from all around the world playing this game, and I like to see their opinions about different things and ask different questions. Oh, nice! I'm gonna be on YouTube! Cool! Very nice, excellent! When you say that America is crazy full of guns, have you guys heard about, like, certain things that have made you think that, like, on the news? Yeah, all the time, uh, you know, the mass shootings and all that in schools and different places, mostly schools. Is that, is that something that's completely, like, out of the ordinary where you are? Is it something that shocks people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Argentina, we don't have, like, you know, the, um, that whole Second Amendment thing, so... Really? Are more, you not allowed to have guns at all? I mean, we, we can, but we have we need a lot of permissions and stuff. You need, like, a license to carry guns and sh Are you allowed to have, like, any kind of guns, or is it, or is it just, like, hunting rifles? Maybe you can have 
like more uh, specific guns such as assault rifles, you are like in the military. But uh, I wouldn't say that a civilian can have those guns. No, I appreciate you and your input because it is something crazy to commonly hear about. Uh, it, it's actually something that happens almost every day over here. Yeah, that's sad, man. It, it really, uh, it really is. Way. It's actually, uh, it's become so common that it's almost hard to, hard to remember all the different ones that happen by name. I think that, uh, I don't know if you agree, but I think that um, they should uh, put some more regulations on the and make like stronger laws about it. Yes. What do you think could be done about it? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to, you know, bother your audience. When, when no, no, no. By all means, no. By all means, I'm just here for opinions. Okay. Well, uh, well, I'm gonna be honest. I, I think what they should do is, you know, politicians mostly they should get on a. On the same side about uh, the gun control, and but they should do both po political parties there, the Republicans and Democrats, be in the same spot about the gun. You know, agree that they should stop all the massacres and protect the civilians, even though you have the whole Second Amendment thingy. You know. If I may ask, if you did have the chance to visit America, where is the first place you would want to visit before a zombie oh, apocalypse? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, well, I, I think uh, the U.S. is a really beautiful country. What I like the most about about it is the landscapes you have. So many different type of landscapes. Oh, absolutely. Cities yeah, and farmlands, yeah, canyons, and mountains, hills. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, many beaches, too. Indeed. I, I, I prefer more the countryside, actually. So where are you? Live in Argentina. Are you in more of the city area, or are you in uh, like a metro area? Uh, no, yeah, I, li I live in the city. It's not a really famous one actually, but I live near Buenos Aires. You know the, the city of Buenos Aires. I'm not familiar, but it does sound like a beautiful place. Yeah, you should go sometime. So, what is something you like to do in Argentina to pass the time? What are your hobbies there in your city? What do you like to do for fun? Well, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm like a loner guy. I don't have much uh well actually i have no irl friends and my friends are here on internet like fox for example hello i know it seems a little bit crazy to hear about the things in america on the news but you know it does have many beautiful things about it so if you ever do get a chance to come on over here by all means we welcome you with open arms well thank you thank you for that sir i think you would have a wonderful time and you know what i don't believe that you're a loner you seem like a really chill cat i think that you have plenty of friends maybe uh you know even some uh some lifelong ones because as they say a tight-knit circle is a little bit better sometimes thank you for the good vibe are you a little bit more on the anti-social side I'm an introverted person. Uh, well, I mean, I, I had kind of a childhood, I would say. I When I was a child, actually, I, when I was a kid, I, I was actually really... I, I, be, I became, like, uh, introverted at that time. Just maybe maybe my past, maybe my past and uh, all the conflicts I had with my, you know, my parents' divorce and uh, the bullying in school and stuff like that. Oh, man, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Why would, uh, why were kids bullying Thank you. you uh because i was like a quiet guy just kind of kept to yourself and they just decided to uh ostracize you a little bit more yeah that's right um yeah i was like a shy quiet guy timid and uh yeah i i, I really didn't speak much at all and it was hard to make friends uh with uh, uh, for me since like we I, I didn't share the same uh you know interest with those people so that's why they pretty much bullied me yeah. Were they more into like sports or something like that, or like more into just things that you had no yeah. interest in? Yeah, you know, they, they were like those typical, okay, Dr. Game is getting We're in the safe room, and there's no judgment in the safe room, so I would like to ask you all a question. So if you had a million dollars given to you, just a million dollars given to you, and you could do anything with it, what would you do with that million dollars? Oh, uh, a bunch of hookers and cocaine, probably. Hookers and cocaine. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. $500,000 in cocaine and $500,000 in hookers. Okay, so you would split it right down the middle. Uh, prostitutes, drugs, bars, yeah. Invested in terrible crypto. Invested in a uh, business? I'd probably help my parents. Uh, nice house, play games, and uh, you know, pay stuff for family, that's about it. Oh no, that's illegal, Mr. Cold. You'll go to prison and make a lot of... You know, you'll drop the soap, my guy. No, don't drop the soap in prison. You'll get your rectum revised, you know? <laughs>
<laughs> you, no, no, if, you, if, you, if you drop the soap, you know, you, you're gonna get some protein in there, you know? Bruh. This will make it the third time some bitch is fucking vomiting on me, including real life. Ah, that would do it. <laughs> now, you know I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask because there's a story there. I'll give you a better, I'll give you the story of why I don't take public transit anymore. Oh, do tell, my friend. <laughs> I'm all ears. Alright, let's get in here first, for story time. <laughs> no judgment in the same room. Okay, well, so I live up in Canada, so we have Tim Hortons. One time I was uh, going home from college, and I was taking the bus home, and uh, I was being nice. So this weirdish looking guy sat next to me in a crowded bus, and I was just like, oh yeah, sure, you can sit there. And pulls his chili out of his bag and starts eating. So I'm like, alright, okay, he's eating, I'm hungry, whatever, he's eating. Oh, chili out of the bag. The bus. Yeah, chili out of the bag, and then like, he starts eating it, bus hits the stop, and then the chili spills onto me. So I'm like, okay, it's an accident, no big deal. Now here's the crazy part. This man, he also dropped a spoon, so he didn't want to use a spoon anymore. He kept on eating the chili without the spoon off of my shoulder. And that is the reason why public transit is no longer an option. <laughs> what the f***, man? Did you just sit there and just like, kind of like, you were so stunned, like, what the f*** just happened? And you had to like, process everything, and you just kind of let, yeah, let him yeah, scoop yeah, it yeah, off your shoulder? Yeah, like, no, he didn't scoop it. He ate it without a spoon. Maybe that was a fetish. Off of my shoulder. Head. Holy shit, so he treated so, his yeah, hand like a nacho. No. <laughs> He treated his mouth like a nacho. Oh god. Imagine a grandma gnawing away at a, like a like at a drumstick without her teeth. And, that and, was this guy trying and to what was done about this so atrocity? Yeah, I was stunned for like half a second. What was done about this atrocity? How was I this cult got off and then you and then Uber at home. I Uber at home after that. I burned that shirt. Oh never my god. That again. You know what? That's really cool that the Uber let you get in the car. Yeah, with fucking chili on my shoulder. Anyways, that's my that's my story. The vomit story isn't that's crazy. Don't worry about it. Let's go. <laughs> Name made me laugh on the uh, loading screen. By the way, pregnant in math class gave me a nice little chuckle. Hey, hey, I got out of school was with a pregnant in math class. That's so funny. I wondered. I was like, I wonder if that's based off of somebody that they knew that actually was pregnant in math class. Make you rest in peace. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh, f that got dark quick. Is there some things going on in life that uh kind of got you a little bit down right now? I'm in an attic on a mobile hotspot. You tell me. In an attic with a mobile hotspot? You're not creeping in somebody in between somebody's walls now, are you? Damn near might be. No, this is like a half story. I got the key to the house. It's an attic nonetheless. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, man. You got a place to hang your hat, and that's what's important. Not for long, though. I'm getting kicked out. Why are you getting kicked out? Things just didn't work out at the place. Uh, I'm living with my ex, and uh, she's. <laughs> Do any of you have any awkward dating experiences or bad dating experiences? What's your stories there? Oh, speaking of that, my friend, you see? Back, way back, many years ago, when I was in high school, I had a crush on this certain person, but I didn't tell them my feelings. And I never saw the thing, uh, that person again. So yeah, uh, if you like somebody, just tell them. Because that person will go away one day, you know? Yeah, oh, so was this, was this like the person, was this like the one that got away? Like, could you actually see a future with this person still? Nah, no, sadly. I think that person lives far away now. Oh, hey, yeah. hey, you know, uh, you know yeah. what? It's never too late. It's never too late. There's still someone out there for you. Yeah, there are plenty of fish in the ocean, my guy. We are the fishermen. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now that we're in another safe room, you guys know what time it is. It's okay. Well, story time it is. What will it be? Will it be the uh, throw up so, or will it be the. Uh... my uni days. Oh, no, nice. This is a Star Wars story. Oh, Star Wars right. story. Buckle up. Yeah, so basically, when I was in university. Me and my roommates were the biggest nerds, so we decided, hey, whenever one of us walks in, we know the other. The guys there let's do an imperial march so the other guy feels <laughs> like darth vader so we're like all right well, let's do it so it's like bomb 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 ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, that basic shit, right so one day i got this girl and i brought her back to the room and then she jumped me and i'm like okay well this is oh, me. Oh, so i decided okay my bed's too far let's use my so my my idea was okay yeah let's just uh use my roommate's bed because it's closer than my bed so i'm about to nail this girl on my roommate's bed and i hear the door unlock and i'm like oh <laughs> i should have put the dead bolt on oh no like <laughs> about the doggy this girl calling them on everything's off and then this guy opens the door and i'm there grabbing her waist and then this guy just comes in he's like bum, 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 bum. and then she's just turning back to look at me she's like what the fuck is with your roommate 
don't don't worry about it. Roommate passes the wall, finally sees me, just gives me this look. I'm like, I, I just give him back the same look. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, I know, I, I kind of used your bed. And then he had this really, really worried look for some reason. Like a really worried look. Yeah, like... Worst thing, and worst timing ever. Yeah. His parents walked into the room. No! His parents walked into the same no. room, thinking it was clear. <laughs> yeah. Oh god! So, my roommate's parents caught me about to knock boots with this girl. So, my dumb ass decided to say hi while I was naked and about to down this girl. And I was just like, hi, Mr. Mrs. whatever. How you doing? <laughs> like, pillow between the legs and are just like, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, good to meet you. <laughs> exactly. And then I was just like, yeah, I think we should leave. What did they say? My dumb ass should come out. Right? And then I'm like, okay, uh, now I decide what to do. Should I be a dumbass and stay and just pretend nothing happened? Or should I leave with her? My dumbass decides to stay in the same room as the thumb while it took half an hour to drop off their sperm and stay. So, oh no. So you stay, so, they, uh, so his parents, so they were the pretty much like staring. Yeah. When, when you, when they walked out of your dorm, I guarantee his parents looked at him and said, yeah, so let's buy you a new bed, son. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but yes, that is probably one. I wouldn't say it's too embarrassing, but it's pretty fucking funny. If you could have one superpower during the zombie apocalypse, what superpower would it be? If you could have any superpower in the zombie apocalypse, what would it be? Invisibility! Ooh, good question. Indestructible Ooh, I like it. Luke Cage style, indestructible skin. That way you can't be bitten. For sure, man, for sure. Invisibility. Nice, invisibility. Why do you say that? I mean, you can't get seen by zombies. And usually, invisibility, they can't touch you, so at the same time, you really can't get hurt. So you mean like, uh, kind of like that Lord of the Rings invisibility. Where it's almost like a yeah. interdimensional in a way. Where like you phase through shit. Interesting. Yeah, that can't get touched. So basically, basically can't die. Teleportation. That was pretty quick. Why do you say teleportation? People, well, the ability to teleport out of danger is, I don't know. I feel like it's a very advantage situation. And, I mean, of course it applies to whoever's near me. I, I suppose it has its flaws. It would have its arms and its throws. Its throws is like I can teleport to whatever it's friendly, uh, but as well as um, enemy uh, zombies or whatever. But you'd be worried about like uh, throws, teleporting throws, in like a wall or teleport. something like that. What, what what would be your concerns? Say like if we were surrounded by a horde of zombies, we teleported away from that horde, but at the same time we would take a few with us. Oh, Would like not be being in control of like the radius of your teleportation abilities? Slider, how's life treating you? Life is good for an old guy. Hey, that's what's up. I don't believe you're old. Why do you call yourself old? You're never old. Not if you don't feel it. Uh, Alright, an aged guy. Just turned old enough to drink, huh? Oh, I don't know. But I'm 60, so I don't know. I guess I'm close to that. Nice, you're 60 and you're playing Left 4 Dead too? That's cool. I've been playing games since I was... 30. What uh, what got you into Left 4 Dead? I don't know. I think I just stumbled on it. I don't know, 14 to 15 years ago. Do you have like uh, kids or grandkids that uh introduce you to a lot of games? No, I introduce everybody to games. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Even better. I'm an old guy. I spend a lot of money on my systems. I'm running two 32-inch screens. Oh wow, look at that. Are you a streamer by any chance? Well, you know what? Honestly, I set myself up. Uh, I set OBS up and everything, but I've never... But you've never streamed? Well, my friend, it's never too late to nah, start. I think it's like, who's gonna wanna watch the old... Who's gonna wanna watch the old guy streaming? Let me tell you something, my friend. I turned 30 this year, and I refuse to believe that, uh, people don't wanna watch an older person stream. I'm telling you right now, your age and wisdom alone is enough to make people not only wanna yeah, watch and tune way. in, but tune in oh, for yeah. the information and the experience itself. I would absolutely subscribe Subscribe and follow, my friend. Oh, you want to be my salesman? <laughs> <laughs> my salesman? <laughs> hey, I would definitely promote and endorse you, my friend. By all means. All right, since we're in the safe room, you gotta remember, we're in the apocalypse, so we're actually forced family. We're forced best friends by the apocalypse, so we can share things and divulge information with no judgment in the safe room. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, yeah, there, there, there were like these typical, you know, like popular guys you see in, in American movies that they play football and they have the big muscles that girls are chasing them and shit like that. Yeah, like uh, like the cool jocks, you know, yeah. they call them jocks over here in America. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. And yeah, I was like this guy 
that the, the one that could probably kill everyone in the fucking school. Oh no! But no, I didn't. Yeah, I was just angry with them and for the way they were, they were treating me. But uh, yeah, I I think I I handle all the suffering. Well. Oh, I, you know, I, I think you turned out to be a really swell person, you know? And uh, I think it was just a case of uh, people trying to make you a monster and say you were a monster and trying to form you into something that you weren't. But, thankfully, you persevered and you right. didn't let it get to you. You didn't let it change you. And I, you know what, and that makes you a strong person. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, because, I mean, that, even if, if I, I wouldn't do, like, if I would do that, I would became, uh, like, like something, uh, that would ruin my life, my parents' life, and probably the the life of my victims if, if I would be the like a shoot. My mom died four years ago. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry and to hear that, man. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I still stuck to my dad. I I, I even work for him, so yeah. You guys have a good relationship. Uh, kinda, but um. He's a good dad. The classic, like, hard-working, stern dad, but, like, you know, always means well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like that, yeah. Hey, no harm in that whatsoever. It's amazing to have one like that. I just hope he can recover because he, the um, doctors find out that he has cancer, too. So oh, my gosh, help. man. Yeah. Up. Is it, uh, have you, fa have you found out what stage? Now I remember, uh, they, they had to cut out one, one of his testicles. Oh, man. And, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, I think he's still in treatment just in for, you know, the cancer to, uh, re, re, reappear again. Like, show up again. Oh man, but he sounds like a really strong guy. Yeah, he is, but like, probably one of the most hard working yeah. guys I've ever seen. But no, he sounds like a really strong guy, and you know what, you just, uh, you being there for him, I guarantee, is giving him more strength than you think. How you liking your school life, man? Is everything going good with that? Yeah. Pretty chill? I'm doing good. Last, last year was probably the worst year ever. Why was it the worst year last year? Fights. Wait, you, you were getting in fights or like? Yeah, well, people made people were just not be. They kept getting in my my friend's business, and then they just kept making everybody mad. And then one thing leads to another. Someone throwing the punch, and then just everything happens. Oh man, I'm sorry that happened. What uh? How how were people getting into your business? One of my friends. One of my friends was like emo, I guess. They were emo. Yeah, like I don't know what it. I don't know what it really is, but all I know is a lot of people in my school don't like it. So. So they they were bullying your friend for being emo. Yeah. And oh, so you were you were defending your friend. Oh, yeah, I was defending my. I, I, I still got in trouble though, because they're like you can't do that. Right, you can't get right. In a fight. And then I didn't really start the fight. They, were, they gave you the whole uh, two wrongs don't make a right kind of thing, which is true in a lot of the yeah. cases. It, it definitely is a true thing, but it's never bad to like stick up for your friend, you know, and uh, and defend yourself or the people important to you, especially if it's innocent, you know, like you didn't do anything wrong, you're not bothering nobody, you know, not causing no trouble, and someone just comes in your lane, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The only, the only times I'm like negative is if someone talks about my dad or my friend. Oh hey, you know it's a, it's nothing to worry about, man. Because in the end, they don't know who they are, or what you're doing, or anything like that. And like, the reason no why I say my dad, not my mom. No one makes fun of my mom. But they make fun of my dad for one reason. You know why that reason is? He's dead. I'm sorry to hear that, man. So yeah, it's been. Is that that's, nine years? So. Oh man, nine years since that happened. If if Long you don't time. mind me asking, how did that happen? Um, so I, so my dad was in the military, so I knew how he did it, but I didn't know the reason why. So, like a family member dies in the military, they give you all his stuff, like his, um, name tag, U.S. Army stuff, a whole bunch of stuff like that. All the memorabilia. There's a bag with a whole bunch of stuff, yeah. There's a bag, and it had a card that I guess he kept with him when he was in the army, and it said, 11, that his, I guess his dad died, so that happened. I didn't know that until the day I actually got that paper. Uh, not the paper, but opened the bag. Because I didn't open the bag for a very long time. Yeah, understandable. Just, you know, it probably took you some time to, of course, heal, you know, and, and just to, you know, kind of 
build up to that point where you were like, alright, let's just do yeah. this. Yeah. So, that's uh, another reason. And... Oh, man. Like, but, so... Yeah. I mean, uh, are you doing alright from all that? Everything good? Like, yeah, I mean... I mean, if it comes up or just something bad happens, I mean, it gets to me, but then I get over it. Like, on some real talk, man, like, just here's the thing. You, your life, the way you are... Is is your dad's legacy? All right. So no matter what anybody says, if any if any whole kid tries to say anything about your dad or you or whatever, you know that's not true. I'm not trying to sound cheesy or anything, but just do the best you can and know that you are gonna live up to that legacy because no shit they say is gonna soil his reputation because you are his reputation. You know, there's always gonna be people in life that are, that are gonna try and get a rise out of you. They're always gonna try and make you angry. Some people, some pe not all people now, but some people in life. Get, they, they like it it like excites them to bother other people you know what i mean you probably met some people like that yeah probably some people in your school yeah, yeah lots of people <laughs> oh i can't imagine but here's the thing man not all people are like that and you are not yeah. like that and you know what your dad knows that and you when you grow up you are going to not only be a spitting image of what he was, the greatness that he was, but you are going to be something even better because you are going to be you. Don't don't let anyone dictate your life. You know what I'm saying? So don't worry about what they say. You got this, man. I fucking believe in you. Damn, bro. That's the first time anybody has said that. And the way I meant you was because of Left 4 Dead? Look. No wonder why this game is so amazing. <laughs> Hey, I'm glad you think so, man. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that, okay? Like, you got this. What's a what's a life experience you would share with someone? Or even a, a life lesson that you would like to pass down to the younger generation? Something that you could maybe have used whenever you were a younger age that you would like to have known? Oh boy, put me on a spot here. I'm here to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Here's the, here's the life lesson. Never stop having fun. Never stop being a kid. We're not friends, we're family. <laughs> As long as we're together, we are the safe room. Take my hand! Take my hand! Man, man. Take my goddamn hand, man! Oh, watch out! A wild oh, champ has got you. This is fucking gold. Yeah. I will never let you go! Remember me, my friend! Remember no. me! You're not going out like this, Walter! Not today! I see the light! I see you! No! You see res! <laughs> hey! I'm going to white heaven, baby! Back from the dead! Revive. Are you like a psychiatrist playing this game? <laughs> Not licensed. I'm a voice actor who does horror narration on YouTube, and I'm also trying to ask people questions on Left 4 Dead. Wait, 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 wait. are you for real? You're for real a voice actor on YouTube? Yes, sir. My uh, YouTube oh, is the cool. same name as my Steam name. Feel free to check it out. I hope you can enjoy it. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah, you sound a little familiar, actually. Yeah, I've come across your channel. Okay, yeah. a couple of your videos last week. Oh, nice. I hope you enjoyed them. Yeah, it's interesting, the, uh, the interviews you do. Don't forget to, don't forget to follow Rats, by the way. I looked him up. Oh, there. thank you so much. I appreciate that. Jesus Christ, is that actually your voice? Sounds like a radio voice, man. Has anybody ever told you you have, like, a mountain voice and it's very soothing? Well, you definitely sound like a voice actor. Holy you got the voice I... You, you got the voice I want. With your silky voice, we can't go wrong. Hey, you all were wonderful to play with. Thank you so much for the participation, and I hope we uh, run into each other again. You too, man. Likewise. Uh, yeah, so. Hey, come on, let's just finish this together. This is literally the best game I've ever had. Glad this is how we got along, you know? Y'all have a lovely night.